Let's talk about the game Trauma Center Second Opinion. So the game starts with the protagonist, Derek Stiles, beginning his occupation as surgeon at Hope Hospital. Derek has only just finished his residency and is noted for being inexperienced and lacking confidence, but fortunately, the patients he has to operate on will never know. Shortly after starting, his nurse leaves the hospital to be replaced by a girl called Angie. At the start, her and Derek don't see eye to eye very often on account of Derek being late, not looking presentable, neglecting patients. Actually, why the hell would anyone like Derek? But as the story progresses, Derek proves himself by helping a car crash victim and displaying a surprising power known as the healing touch. <laughs> yeah, sure Derek, I used to tell girls I have the healing touch as well. Although not actually an innuendo, this power allows Derek to move at lightning fast speeds to save patients who are within an inch of their life. In turn, this power proves to be a useful asset when a sudden outbreak of a parasitic disease named guilt starts forming. Yes, the disease is straight up called guilt. Ironically, I don't think the writer of that line was feeling very guilty when accepting their paycheck. Though that isn't the only weird plot point you'll have to swallow, for you see, while this game is a doctor operating simulator, it's also one half visual novel. Not your usual anime visual novel either, because this game is set in a surgery, which means it's written like a hospital soap opera. In my opinion, the most bonkers kind of soap opera. The soundtrack will let you know that too. It's so overly dramatic it makes shouting I hate you look like a subtle attempt at an insult. Trauma Center goes absolutely crazy with its plot points, especially towards the end of the game. Dead parents start showing up, there's talk of people getting euthanized, you use your surgery tools to defuse a time bomb at one point, it's wild. It's so stupid the game even has the balls to say the characters and events are fictitious as if anyone would confuse this for real life events. Not that the game starts crazy however, the first two chapters or maybe one quarter of the game is weirdly tame. There's a lot of character moments, relationships go through arcs, at the start you would think it's trying to be serious. As soon as the guilt parasite shows up you barely learn anything new about the characters, although that being said, the writing for said characters even in the more focused chapters aren't great. There's one scene that they make a big deal of where Derek is trying to comfort a patient before operating but it doesn't work. Angie busts in and says he needs to work on his bedside manner, being more responsive and kind to the needs of the people he operates on. This moment does hold value to Derek's character arc, but it gets ever so slightly diminished when Angie goes to tell a suicidal girl to kill herself. So yeah, not amazingly consistent. Angie's personality is basically whatever the game wants her to be in that moment. You could just change her name to token love interest and you'd never tell. The writing gets further confusing when during some dialogue, the doctors will refer to actual medical terms that chances are you won't understand. In fact, the game is so confident you won't know what these words mean that if you read the instruction manual, they actually give you a glossary in the back, but even then it doesn't help much. Edema, an accumulation of serous fluid in the body. What in God's name is a Severus fluid? It gets especially annoying when the game starts throwing in its own made up words like when it's naming every individual strain of guilt. I'm playing a game about surgery, not trying to get a master's degree. The game's dialogue doesn't even give up when you're operating. Throughout the procedures, the characters will go on talking, but the game is almost completely text based. You have to keep looking away from your patient to glance at the bottom of the screen in case they said something. Now I can't speak from experience, but I don't think a doctor should be this distracted. I know it's not exactly brain surgery, but your lungs are close enough. The surgery parts of this game aren't super interesting. I mean, it's good, don't get me wrong, but you just follow instructions for the most part. I want to get back to the story because that's where the real fun is. After discovering guilt, Derek is invited to work at a place called Caduceus. This is a hub of medical research that opposed the guilt outbreak caused by an organization that called themselves Delphi. Their master plan is pretty much every overly dramatic master plan you can think of. The world is overpopulated and we must eradicate mankind. Not including ourselves though, because that might be painful. They make a lot of references to Old Testament texts like Adam and the original sin, but that seems slightly out of place considering the two opposing organizations are named after Greek legend, but hey ho, just add that to the list of 7,000 other inconsistencies. Caduceus are a little weird, I'll be honest. They dubbed the guilt outbreak with the new term medical terrorism because apparently we can understand words like epiphilium, but bioterrorism, no, those are big boy words. The game does have some problems found in most visual novels as well. I respect they took the time to draw more than four backgrounds and that's on top of the surgery stuff, so bravo there. There are little bits that cause confusion though, like the character portraits. First, we have to acknowledge that only so many facial expressions were drawn, so they are limited to showing the same three slides over and over, but the clothes are another thing. One example is when flying on a plane, Derek is wearing his full medical gear, including a scalpel, which definitely wouldn't have made it past airport security. Some might think this is cutting corners by not drawing the art, but they didn't need to. There is art of Derek wearing casual clothes in the first chapter, why didn't they re 
actually use it. I guess the programmers are just as guilty as the writers. So Trauma Center is a little rough around the edges, but it is pretty good. It's one of those games where it's both fun to play and laugh at. I give it a hearty recommendation. The sequel on the other hand? We're gonna have to talk about that one. Trauma Center New Blood has a loose connection to the first, in the same way a poorly fitting noose has a loose connection to your neck. The gameplay and story are mostly the same, but there are a few more notable changes. For one, there are two playable characters, Marcus and Valerie. There's no reason to have two Doctors. You can choose which one you want to play as, but they work the same. Unless you care about the fact one of them was born in November, it's not going to affect your playing. Another new thing to note is the introduction of full voice acting. Turns out I didn't want voice acting in this game. Ignoring the fact the performances are mediocre at best and borderline racist at worst, the operation segments have been made really boring by it. Constantly being told how to perform procedures is really annoying because they frequently repeat lines, not to mention the gameplay stops for lines to finish, making the whole game really slow. A colonoscopy would be less of a pain in the ass. For a visual novel, full voice acting works better when there's more animation. When your eyes aren't focused on the bottom half of the screen, you suddenly realise how boring the visuals of this visual novel are. Fortunately, you can turn off voice acting at any moment, which is a small blessing, but it feels sacrilegious. To say this game would be better with less effort behind it must be a blow to the developers. It's weird because New Blood is not so far away from Second Opinion, but at the same time, it feels so much less. The plot is crazy, but it lacks the same level of construction. In New Blood, it's just, yep, here you go, you're pulling out kidney stones now. Whereas in Second Opinion, it was practically the second coming of Christ if someone had so much as a paper cut. Even the cast of characters are less memorable. Besides the fact that half of them could easily be secret villains by looks alone, I can't tell you anything unique about their personalities. It lacks the same style and punch. Trauma Center Second Opinion is great and worth playing. Trauma Center New Blood is just the same but less. But now, if you excuse me, I'm suffering from apathy. Much like guilt, it means I'm not writing anything significant and ending this video with no proper conclusion. Goodbye!